Hello everyone and welcome to my studio and channel Impulsive Artistry. My name is Charles and I'm excited to talk to you a little bit about painting today and to do a little bit of a demonstration. I will be showing you the first part of a multi-part series, this video I mean, um, is the first part of a multi-part series where I will be going in depth into my painting, Cloudy River. If you check out the description below you will see that I have a time-lapse video of this particular painting up, for 40, up there for you and you can check out the whole thing and see what we're going to be doing in the long run. But today we're just going to be talking about the first part of the painting and that part is the clouds and of course the sky and we'll be doing the background color of the foliage on the foreground trees so you can kind of see how we do that. I'll be talking about the materials you need as well as the techniques that I'm using to create this just beautiful painting so I hope you enjoy. Okay without further ado let's keep going. Oh wait 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 okay hold on guys Take a moment, I'm gonna stop here for a second. I totally forgot, I have an art blog and I need to mention that. If you go to the description below, under the link to my time-lapse video, you'll see another link there, and that'll be right to my blog. You can go onto my blog and you'll see articles about painting, about music, about all kinds of artistic, impulsive things that I like to do. You'll also see um, a gallery of all of my paintings, and it's more great stuff and great content there for you. So please guys, check it out. Watch this video and then head over to the blog. All right, let's get on to the painting. Engage. All right, let's get going. Today we'll be starting with an eight by eight canvas board on the easel already. As you can see, it's already set up there so we can get going with the sky. So let's just see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm applying the sky. I'm using a mixture of cobalt, cobalt blue, and, excuse me, and mi like a soft mixing white. And uh, the paint I'm using is uh, Daniel Smith paint. It's very good at oil paint. I highly recommend them if you want to try them out. Uh, it mixes extremely well on the palette, and um, it really you think it, and it does what you want. I love that about that type of paint. I'm using a one and a half inch wide brush. And it's a fantastic little brush. I'm just tapping, and I'm not putting a lot of paint on that, that brush. I'm just pressing it, putting it right into the canvas. Now, this is a wet-on-wet -wet painting technique, meaning I'm applying wet paint on wet paint. To make sure that this works, you need to make sure that your bottom layer is really grounded to the canvas. So I'm just pressing with a good amount of force to make sure that, yes, it's really ground into that canvas. To check it, to make sure I've grounded enough, I can take a knife, like a palette knife, and scrape at it. If I see that the color of the base paint is still there on the canvas, even after I've scraped some off, then I know that I have ground it successfully and that the whole thing is really in the color, is really in the canvas. It's embedded in that canvas, and that's what I want. I've also made sure not to do a bar or a horizontal bar of blue, but I've had some waves and some motion and movement. Some parts are lighter than others. And that's great. Next, we will start working with the cloud shadows. For the cloud shadows, I will be using a gray color. How did I get that gray color? Okay, here's the secret. You're going to be using a mixture of ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt umber. I love that color. It's such a great color. It warms anything up. And mixing it with some white at the end, you'll get a black color first between the blue and the brown. And then you're going to take that black and light it up a bit with the white to make it a gray. I'm using a stencil brush here. That means it's a roundish brush with a flat head or a very flat um, end to it. And you are going to see that I'm sort of taking that brush and I'm kind of pressing it into the canvas, grinding it in like I was doing before. But then I'm kind of wiggling it to the side to get those nice cloud shadows. Don't overload your brush. Just enough for the color, really grind it in, and that's enough. You want to make sure that you have plenty of space for the white highlights coming next. Okay, now I'm taking a fan brush, and I'm going to just start tapping. I'm loading one side of the brush, and then gently loading the other side of the brush. And in between each time I'm going to go back to the white, I'm actually going to clean my brush off. I'm not going to necessarily be using cleaning solution, but I will take a rag and just wipe both sides of the brush off to try to get as much paint off that brush as possible. Um, if it mixes a little bit with the blue and the gray, that's okay. A little bit of mud is going to contrast nicely and that's okay. But I want to make sure that I have some popping white parts as well. So to get that effect, I either flip the brush over or I dip it back in the paint after cleaning. 
As you can see, my white's gotten a little bit muddy. I didn't quite clean it off good enough, but that's okay. I'm going to get a little more of the white. And, oh, there, now it's popping. Perfect. Back to how I want it. And I'm going to keep making adjustments like that. If it looks a little too dull to me, get more white. If uh, I need, if it's really getting muddy, then just wipe your brush off. It's not a big deal. I'm trying to not cover up all my dark. Well, I say that, I'm watching myself. What am I doing? I'm covering up the dark a little bit too much. Um, but that's okay, because painting is so, so forgiving. It's so easy to go back and fix your mistakes. That's why I love painting. I love it even more than I love drawing, actually. Uh, drawing is so specific, and if you make a mistake, you can erase it, but there's always a look, a little mark afterwards, and you can kind of tell. Painting, you make a mistake, it's so easy. You can take a knife, you can scrape things off, you can um, just paint over it. It's so much more forgiving, and it's really great for beginners because of that fact. Okay, I'm going back in with that gray color, um, like I had talked about. Uh, by the way, for the highlight color on those clouds, that white, that's just pure white. I'm not adding anything to it. I'm just hoping that it's going to pick up a little bit of the gray and a little bit of the blue, and that's going to give it enough of a tint so that um, I know it's going to be picking up a little bit of that underneath, so that's going to read correctly. I don't want to go too, too bright white. You don't want globs and globs of white on there, but you want just enough so that it pops in certain areas. Like right in the center there, you can see that the light is hitting it. Now I'm adding a little more gray for contrast. The number one thing to remember in painting is that you need the dark to see the light. You need the dark to see that light. So remember that when you're painting. If you get a lot of light color, it doesn't matter what color, bright yellow, bright orange, bright red if you're doing fall, or bright green if you're doing spring or summer, or um, anything like that, um, you're going to need a darker color to hold it together. So remember that. It's true for clouds as well. You're going to need like a grayish, maybe a purple color. You can do all kinds of different, different colors underneath. Here I'm doing, because it's daytime, I'm going to do a gray to give that base to the cloud. So when I add the highlights, it pops. It looks fantastic, magnificent, and realistic. But now I'm going to continue on anyways, getting into doing the foliage. And I... Uh, uh, adding in the uh, background color for that foliage. As you can see, it's going to be a bit darker here. Uh, yeah, I added a bit more blue there. So here's how I make the foliage. This is what I do. I take a little bit of that ultramarine blue, like I mentioned, and you're going to take that, and you're going to mix it with that burnt umber. It's such a great color. It warms anything up. So you'll be also adding a touch of the permanent green. So you don't want to add too much of the permanent green. You just want to add just enough so that it's all going to blend together nicely. For the painting technique, I am tapping the brush. I have oriented the brush vertically, as you can see. And I am, again, pushing that base color into the canvas. I am tapping the brush as well on the palette to load the brush. I'm a little bit lighter at the top, as you can see. And then I get a little bit darker and heavier as I press to the bottom. That's so that you get that light airiness at the top, so I'm getting some break. And then I'm going to, you know, really dig in some other spots. I'm also trying to keep in mind how far down is it on the canvas that the water starts. I'm thinking about that even right now I'm laying in my foliage and I'm seeing that I think the right hand side at this point is going to be closer to you so I want to make sure that I make that side, uh, the trees on the right hand side are a little bit bigger. Things that are closer to you are going to be bigger where things that are farther away as you can see those little trees in the middle are kind of small so that they fall back into the background and I get some depth to my painting. Once I add the land, I add the bank, the river bank, to the painting, um, which is the next step. It will really help create that right hand side as being the dominant side, I hope. Um, but again, I'm trying to think about proportions and where things are going to happen even in these preliminary steps of adding in the background color. Looking back here, I realized, oh no, uh, these clouds are not fluffy looking enough. So how do I fix that? Well, it's very, very simple. Um, you take the corner of a dry brush. That brush looks like it has a green paint on it. It doesn't. It's just um, from previous paintings. I just used that brush and a little bit of the dye stuck to it. Um, but it's a clean brush, I assure you. And I'm just taking the corner of it, and I'm just sort of grinding it together. And I'm, I'm trying to leave the highest, highlightiest parts there, that word, the highlight parts alone. And I'm just taking the bottom of that gray and blending it into the white to give it kind of a softer look. Now, if you go too far, like I just did, it's not a big deal. All you have to do is grab a little bit more of the gray color, put the low lights back in, and then come back with some highlights over those low lights to make it pop once more. 
and it's very forgiving. I just love painting so much because if I make a mistake, it's not a big deal. You can always go back and fix things like that. Um, it now looks a lot more like the picture that I was working from, and I'm much happier with it. Uh, here I'm just blending a little bit more with that clean brush and softening it up a bit, the white into the gray. And once I add the highlights, it's going to be fantastic. Okay, so uh, by the way, this, this location is a uh, part of the San Marcos River Bank in San Marcos, Texas, uh, where I was studying and working on my master's degree uh, in music, not in art, um, but uh, it was a, just a beautiful river that I had access to, and I could just walk down every day to the river bank and look at this beautiful river that was running by and uh, get inspired to paint and to enjoy nature. Something that I love to do is being in nature, as well as being creative, of course. So it looks like we're drawing to a close here. Oh, back to that white. I'm not happy with that cloud. I can see that. So what am I doing here? I'm just kind of trying to get the brush to move quickly. So I keep my brush dancing around that canvas. And I'm just taking the side of it and just kind of pressing in a kind of flicking motion upwards to get that, that nice impression of those clouds. And I think it's popping. It's starting to look really, really good and, and pretty realistic, I think. Okay, we're getting to the end of the video now. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll be back very soon with part two of this video series on painting my cloudy river painting. Thanks. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I had a fantastic time painting that painting, at least the first part of it anyways. And we will be back with more great content here for you every week. Next week, look forward to part two of this video. Uh, right now, you can check out my art blog on Blogger. Uh, impulsive artistry of course name of the channel name of the blog and you can also check out the link in the description to the time-lapse video of this full painting so you get a sneak peek on what's gonna happen next time on part two of this video it's already out you already know spoilers are there okay have a great day thank you so much for watching see you later